Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday. It's my first day back from work after coming home from a vacation. And I don't know why, but I just felt like picking up my vlogging camera and doing a vlog. So I'm going to make it. I don't have anything probably particularly exciting to show you, but I don't know. I just love watching these on YouTube. So I figured I'm going to start making some more. And you'll get, you know, the usual suspects. Uh, crafting, cooking, lifestyle in New York, all that stuff. So hello and <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, I'm actually working right now over there. I'm like maiming my back by sitting in this rocking chair all the time, but it's just so comfortable. So I don't want <laughs> to sit at like a real desk. So yeah, I'm working right now. Um, I'm going to get my hair cut later today. So that'll be nice. And yeah, it's just going to be a good week. I feel inspired to sew right now. I have a lot of stuff I want to make. Spring and summer just brings out the clothing I like to wear. I don't really even have a lot of long sleeve things in my wardrobe because I just don't wear them. I prefer to like layer up with sweaters and you know like tank tops or short sleeve shirts underneath. I did make this top a while ago uh, but yeah so I'm just feeling more inspired to sew now that it's getting warmer out. So I'm looking at patterns and have some ideas in mind for what I want to make. I really want to cut some new things out. I need to finish up a project that I am currently working on. I'm excited to wear that. Actually, it's like the same pattern as this, but I've modified it a little bit to like look a little bit different. So yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get to work, but I just wanted to pop in and say hello before I get too far in this vlog and of showing you things. It's not going to be like a daily vlog or anything like that. I would love to get on a schedule where I'm posting at least one vlog a week and that way I can just pick up the camera when I feel like I'm doing interesting things rather than although I actually like watching mundane stuff too so I don't know all I can say is is that I've picked up my camera multiple times and have so many clips to start filming videos like this and then I just don't continue with it because I'm like does anyone even care but you know what I'm gonna give it a go this time let's see how it goes <laughs> let's see how it goes it is towards the end of the workday now. I feel like I did not get very much done today because it's been so many meetings. It was my first day back, so a lot of it was like digging out of emails and having the meetings and you know all the things. But anyway, the day is almost done. I'm coming in to check on my seedlings like every 20 minutes just to see what newness may be coming. Unfortunately, a lot of them did not survive our vacation. We were only gone for a week, but that was enough to have them be sufficiently underwatered for once. Most of the time I'm overwatering everything. I have a few more seeds uh, that I'm going to be sowing soon. I make myself a sowing calendar so that I can kind of count backwards from my last frost date to see which seeds I should sow when. Uh, it just makes it easier for me to keep track of, so I have a few that I need to be sewing any day now, really, that I can, but I also need to add another shelf back to the seed starting station. If you're curious about this setup, it's like honestly the ugliest thing in my house. It's not cute at all or aesthetically pleasing, but it's functional and it gets the job done. If you are at all interested in my seed starting set up and like what I have and all the materials I use. I have a blog post for it on my blog, JacquelineSalem.com. Excuse me, Monsieur. He has somehow discovered that he no longer needs the chair to get up to here and can just jump straight from the floor, which I do not like because when he's hungry, he just takes a paw and bats off anything he can to get me to feed him. Isn't that right? <laughs> While well, I'm in here, this is the project I'm currently working on. I'll put a picture on the screen to show you what it's inspired by, but I just love this pattern so much. It's the call 7974. It's such a, it's just such a good pattern. The way it's constructed is so nice. It like finishes the inside in a lot of areas. Uh, as your construct, it like, has finishing instructions basically for the inside and a lot of McCall's patterns don't do that. It's just really nicely done. So this is almost done. It just needs um, a bodice extension um, and some buttons and other than that it'll be done. So this one's really close and I cannot wait to move on to another project I have my eye on and I'm going to be using this pattern for it. This is McCall's 8141. And I saw this top by 
uh, Elisabetta Francini, I think it is. It's um, a designer and I love the top and I wanna use this to dupe it. It's amazing. In fact, I got a bunch of stuff in the McCall's, the recent something delightful sale. So I got a bunch of McCall's patterns and a Vogue pattern. I'll show you these later, but yeah. So I'm really excited about this. I got some striped fabric for it and everything. I cannot wait, but I need to finish this first and then I can move on to this one. We're on our way to the wine store. <laughs> We're just out of any wine for our dinner this week, so heading to go try some new selections. I've been very all about, I had to look up the pronunciation, so bear with me. Chutaniftipup. <laughs> those ones. I've been obsessed with those wines lately, so I'm gonna have to see if I can find some at our local wine store. And we just stopped by the Old Garden uh, and very pleased to report, it's been a little while since I have it's checked on any. Okay. <laughs> Still married, but filing separately. That lady was far away from us. That's how I feel. I know. She was a good 20 feet away from us. Definitely. <sighs> anyway, uh, pleased to report that all of my roses are very much alive, which is good because I was concerned for one of them in particular. So all of them are starting to push buds right now, like new growth. So I'm very excited about that. Now I just have to figure out, are you cold? Yes. Me too. <laughs> now I just have to figure out where I'm going to put the other 11 that I've ordered for this year. I mean, I know where a fair amount of them are going because I'm not growing veg really anymore. Now we're up to 11. Oh, I have 11 currently and I ordered 11 <laughs> more. I have to grow my collection. See, this is why I can't be allowed to have collections in general because I obsess. I totally obsess. My brain is just so obsessive with these things. I really should not be someone that has collections in general. So, um, yeah, but he just fuels my addictions because he got me a gift card to get more roses for Valentine's Day. So that, that sounds like a bad gift, but no, I bought real roses and, like Yes. But you specifically asked for English roses and I mm -hmm. couldn't find any. So I got her a gift card. Yes. Austin. So it's Austin. not at all. I am not a jerk. Yeah, no, no, that's not at all a gift card because you don't know what to do. It's like very specific. Gift card. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They have uh, $63 billion worth of So I just got to the hair salon. I go to Union Beauty in Brooklyn. I decided since I was in a pool so much last week, it's so chlorinated too, that I would do a deep conditioning treatment on my hair this time. So I'm doing a deep conditioning treatment and then just like a little trim. You probably wouldn't even know if I didn't tell you. Tell them what we're eating tonight. Um, so in Philadelphia, um, everybody thinks that Philadelphia's food scene is like cheesesteaks. And that is very insulting considering that Philadelphia has exceptionally fine dining. And um, one of the things that they kind of do, because there's so much of like a bar tavern culture, they do like highbrow, lowbrow things. So they'll do like potato skins, but they will be like duck confit with like truffle oil and um, shaved chives <laughs> and it'll be like the most delicious thing you've ever tasted and mm -hmm. um so we're we're doing a little homage to that and we're making spaghettios yes to the nines yes insanely good spaghettios yes so this is one of these like kind of obscure hipster hobbies that andrew and i have where <laughs> We like to make highbrow, lowbrow food because we get so inspired by like Philly doing this that we just decide to do it on our own. So for example, um, I guess it was two years ago now, this one just comes to mind where I love Sonic. I love Sonic so much. 
um, but there's not really any within like close distance to New York. Like you have to drive to get to Sonic. So anytime we go to New Jersey or Pennsylvania or anything like that, we always go to a Sonic. And um, Andrew one night made homemade corn dogs, tater tots, and cherry limeades, but like to the nines, like corn dogs, tater tots. They had like sage. What yeah. did you put in the tater tots? I forget now. There was definitely sage in there, like fresh sage from our garden. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, there was something else. I can't. Remember. I don't know. It's been so long. It's like two years ago, but we love to do stuff like this. So tonight we're going to do that with SpaghettiOs. <laughs> And I'm going to make the meatballs for the SpaghettiOs, and you're going to do the sauce and pasta. It's going to be amazing. We can't wait. dinner okay so we didn't make the pasta that's the only thing we did not home make but we have pasta Andrew made the sauce and I was in charge of the little mini meatballs <laughs> what is in your pasta sauce okay we have some uh, select Italian plum tomatoes San Marzano tomatoes mm -hmm. which are crush for a good tomato sauce yes. uh, any Italians out there will understand the yes and um, this is like a hybrid of recipes and it's uh, taking, it's trying to duplicate um, this restaurant that's kind of near us that is very good named Aldi La. So we've got San Marzano tomatoes, we've got uh, mushroom shallot, tons of garlic, just mm -hmm. so much garlic, <laughs> which is the, the key to a good Italian recipe. Salt, pepper, um, basil. Uh, a lot of basil. We have a little red pepper, um, like like an actual like a like a real pepper. Yeah, this is like a I don't know what you would call. I it. actually don't know what it looks like a habanero, but it's not a habanero color. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, but there's also a lot of like crushed red pepper, dried in mm -hmm. there. So there's like squeeze of lemon, like the juice of a whole lemon, mm -hmm. um, white wine, and. Um, all the basil yeah. it, so it's it's like um it's a red sauce but it's not too thick and um it's got a kick mm -hmm. so. yeah there's a definite little bit of spiciness to it yeah. in the meatballs made them into these little tiny meatballs as is traditional with spaghettios and made all of these and then there's a few more in the oven those are probably ready to come out now yeah they're definitely ready <laughs> here is the plated spaghetti with meatballs, high brow, low brow, spaghetti with meatballs. I can't, I can't even, it's so good. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what more I can say. This is absolutely incredible. So incredible, in fact, that Andrew had to drop what he was doing to go and type out the recipe because we never write anything down. We have to remember what we did every time, so. He's writing it down immediately. The sauce is amazing. The meatballs are amazing. It's so good. Adult SpaghettiOs is a go. Jafar keeps trying to steal it. Good morning, everybody. It's been a few days since I've got my hair cut. I decided to curl it today just to like play around with it. It's looking a little bit 70s because I have not bangs, but shorter pieces in the front of my hair. But yeah, I really like it. I think it turned out really cute. Um, today, just working my computer and later on today after work is over i really need to go to the city to get some body lotion i am totally out of the one that i have from the body shop i got this one from the body shop i have totally scraped this one clean and it's just like so dry in the air right now i need one so badly that i'm like gonna make a special trip to the city to go get something else so i'm thinking i'm gonna go to la occitan and get 
one from there because I haven't tried one from there before but I'm really particular about them because I don't like really thick cream ones I like ones that are almost like a gel texture so we'll see what I can find but I've heard good reviews so I think I'm gonna go there this afternoon Andrew just got home he's telling me all about his suit adventures he's been looking for a suit for the wedding and found what he thinks is a good vendor I think he wants to do like a sort of uh, made either made to measure or fully bespoke. I'm not sure exactly what he wants to do yet, but just chatted with him and want to come out to the greenhouse to check on my seedlings. Oh my gosh, look at these anemones. Look at that. So much growth. Oh, so exciting. So I tried two different selling methods for my ranunculus and anemones because I only had so many of the trays with the individual cells. So I tried out another method where I sewed in a seed flat, like just like a container essentially, and they're doing really well. So once you kind of pre-sprout them, the idea is that you could just like dig them up and then plant them out in the garden. And yeah, this method worked really well for me because I'm such an overwaterer and somehow this method I think helps me to not overwater them as much because a lot of my corms <laughs> rotted away even though I did not put that much water in it. I don't know what is happening. I don't know. But anyway, I have a lot, a lot in here, a lot that survived. So, so many ranunculus and anemones this year. Really excited. Have my sweet peas. Some of them got kind of crispy <laughs> when we came back from Mexico. Unfortunately, they were underwatered. Well, we were in Mexico because I didn't have anybody watering them while I was gone. I had someone looking after the cats, of course, but no one to look after my plants. So a lot of them got kind of crispy, but didn't fully die. So they'll be okay. The leaves will not recover, but when it grows new growth, it will be fine. So right now in the greenhouse, sweet peas, anemones, ranunculus, and then these are the pansies that survived over winter, AKA violas. The rest of my plants are up in the house in my seed starting station. I pruned the roses yesterday. I don't know why I'm showing you this, like that's gonna show you any roses, but I did prune my roses yesterday at the other garden, the Arbor Garden. I call this one the Black House Garden. I did officially decide the name was gonna be the Black House Garden because the greenhouse is such an identifying feature and I went through all that trouble of painting it black because I really wanted to, so. So this one shall forever be known as the Black House Garden. Yeah, so many signs of life right now. Look at all these bulbs. They're coming up everywhere. These are tulips, more tulips. Uh, those are iris reticulata. They're like little mini irises. We have daffodils, more daffodils, more daffodils, some more tulips. So yeah, everything is coming up so far, mostly in these two areas, which get the most sun not a ton of stuff over on this side yeah oh look i spoke too soon that looks like uh daffodils right here this side is definitely the coldest of like the four areas just so excited to get planting out here this year it's all gonna just be one big experiment i have no idea what's gonna work and what's not because you know like the trees and stuff and of course the fence and the other buildings that just shade out a lot of this garden which is unfortunate because my planting style like my favorite kind of gardening style is that English cottage style look so we'll see what happens if you have any suggestions for uh, shade plants or half sun plants which is mostly what I have planned for this area anyway because you know gotta select the right plant for the right place um let me know in the comments down below I've got a lot but just in case there's like something I didn't think of um but yeah so what I'm gonna try to do is incorporate as many native plants as possible like plants that are native to this area of uh, the United States because they require less water you can push them harder in conditions where they may not be completely ideal because they're more acclimated to the environment so as many natives as I possibly can to kind of achieve that English cottage style look or prairie style planting too I love that as well with as many New York natives as I can 
Yeah, it's like 71 degrees outside right now. It's crazy. So crazy. Of course, I have the greenhouse door open to let as much airflow in there as possible. Yeah, oh, I'm just so excited to see signs of bulb life in this colder bed right here. Oh my gosh, I'm just like channeling spring with this dress that I made last year right before my trip to France where Andrew and I got engaged. I just love this so much. It's uh, inspired by this brand called Dish. They were advertising the hell out of me on Instagram and I fell prey to it and I was like, well, I'm not gonna buy it, but I'll make it. All right, that's it for my little break for now. The greenhouse plants are looking fine. I just wanted to check on them and make sure everything was okay. I have to remember to close that greenhouse door before I leave to go to get lotion tonight because it's supposed to get down into the 30s again. So just trap that heat in there. Oh, I left my keys. Spoiler alert, did not go to Le Occitan after work today. We are gonna go to our local pub and get dinner because we didn't buy our meal prepping stuff today. Andrew found a Chinese cookbook on the sidewalk. Yes, we're gonna give it a go. Because, Look at this cover. Because uh, it's hard to find a really good, authentic cookbook that will actually implement ingredients that I can find easily. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a good Asian supermarket. At least not nearby. It's like a drive away, so not so convenient to get to. That really is. Or if it's just a prestige thing. Yeah, I mean, that's more my. Looking for what? I'm looking to see if people post a more golden name and entry. Oh. Competition is Competition. fierce! Very, very. We are back from our dinner and we're about to open this bottle of wine. The other day I bought three Chateauneuf de Peps. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or not. So we're trying the second one of the three. We had the first one the other night and it was Andrew's favorite bottle of wine that we've ever had. I, so I really think I'm into this Chateauneuf de Peps phase right now. So we're about to crack open this next one and we'll see what we think. Chateauneuf de Peps. Chateauneuf de Peps. Chateauneuf de Peps. What? Chicken. Adobo and chicken? Yes. Oh, with the sauce, yes. Christmas rose, Helen. Oh, Hellebore from Seed. I keep forgetting that that is in there. All right, I don't know. Just based on the look of this one, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think the other one may be better. We're going in order from least expensive to most expensive. So just to do a little comparison, see what we think. This is the middle expensive one. It was $39. Ah, <gasps> ah, I know. These are the most expensive wines I've ever bought. We just do cheap wine. We're typically a fan of like the 16 to, to like, $22 range. Even most. 22 is very high for us. I know. We're very stingy on the wine. Yeah. Okay, ready? Back up so they can see you. You're too I'm tall. too tall. Okay, I can't I get in the frame. Down. Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't like anything on the first try. We didn't put the aerator on it either. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys have to see this thing. Okay, so my sister got this for Andrew for Christmas. We're very classy. <laughs> this was the first least expensive one that we got. It was still expensive though. It was like $36. And so far, I feel like I like this one more than I like this new one. We shall see, though. It's a cheesy bottle, though. So cheesy. But I think I like this one more. 
Andrew just discovered these in um, the fridge. I forget I do this sometimes. So some seeds need what's called cold stratification where they have to go uh, for a period of cold to break their dormancy. And hellebores are apparently one of those kinds of plants. I am perfectly aware that I could buy hellebores um, as a plant, but they're quite expensive. And plus I think it's fun to try to grow them. So I got these from an Etsy seller online and I'm gonna give it a go. You never know, you never know. I have a feeling this is gonna be like a really tricky thing to grow and it may literally be years until I see flowers on it. But once I do, I mean, how great would that be? I'm in my seed starting area and I'm going to start a few more seeds tonight, according to my sewing calendar. Andrew is working on a painting project for Adepticon. And we're watching the Florette show, Growing Florette. This is my giant soil tub. I need to mix some water in it to pre-moisten it. And then I'm gonna get out the seeds for my seed suitcase to sew tonight. It's gonna be mostly Cosmos, I think, tonight. <laughs> Um, put it on like a yours is better video quality. It's a new phone. Yeah. Should we put it on a, like a oh, book or something? <laughs> I'm at Emily's house right now. I started doing vlogs. Well, I wanted to make vlogs. So that's great. Hence this. Yeah. And I haven't vlogged anything. Oh, were yet, you so not recording during that time? Oh, I was. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have all of that. It now. just says. 17 seconds, I guess I stopped. I stopped it okay. and restarted it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So I'm over at Emily's right now, and we're... Uh, Flirting with my dinner. new boyfriend. Yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, hanging out, chatting about all the life updates. Mm -hmm. And about to eat some meatloaf and a salad. I'm very excited and very cool. hungry. And also drinking wine. <laughs> saw soil everywhere, big holes dug, came outside to investigate, and I'm what I'm guessing is a bunch of squirrels dug up tons of bulbs, discovered that they were already sprouting, and then left them around. Really annoying, but hopefully now they'll see that things are growing and they can't eat it or steal it anymore. Wishful thinking, I don't know. But yeah, look at all of that over there. And over there. And all of that over there. It's amazing. I can't wait. Slightly golden on top, doughy on the inside. It's Friday. It's a date night. I've been horrible at giving you any information whatsoever about what we're doing and when, but we're gonna go out to dinner now. I'm wearing a jacket that I made myself. Um, this corset top that I've had since high school and these black pants and black shoes. I quite like this outfit. It's a very like feminine meets cool. I think. Ready? Yeah. 
We are headed to Manhattan. We're gonna go to this restaurant called The Mermaid Inn. It's been on my radar for a while because one of my favorite illustrator designers, Louise Philly, she did the logo for it and I've always wanted to go ever since I saw uh, the logo design. So we're going there for dinner. subway we're making a quick pit stop at La Occitan so I can buy some lotion it's in the oculus which I showed you guys at the holiday season during vlogmas if you watched that so let's go talking the oysters were delicious yes the ceviche was delicious the ceviche was very good the entrees i don't know what happened but it's like it lost all flavor everything was cooked correctly it just not seasoned at all yeah there was no seasoning but it was still good i think i would still go back and try other things or go yeah. there for their like oyster and like um like happy hour or something there yeah let's go back for happy hour. yeah so the mermaid inn Definitely put it on your list for happy hour. Everything is cooked really well. It's just their sauces and seasoning needed some help. Why is it no matter when you've eaten, pizza always looks good? Everyone's eating pizza right now and it looks so delicious. And we just ate. I'm full and I want pizza. I'm full. <laughs> oh, look, there's the IFC theater. 